Today, I'm going to be talking about a scientist who traveled the world, defied societal expectations, and performed important scientific work, E.K. Janaki Amal. Amal was born on November 4th, 1897, to a large middle-class family. She attended school in Telicherry, a town on the western coast of India, more commonly known as Thalassery. She received her bachelor's degree from Queen Mary's College in 1921, and her master's degree from the University of Michigan in 1925. She went on to get her doctorate in Michigan as well in 1930 but alongside all of this schooling, she taught at universities in both India and the USA. She was obviously a very driven person, dedicated to her teaching and learning. In 1934, she joined C.A. Barber and T.S. Venkatraraman at the Sugarcane Breeding Institute in Combiator. During her five years there, she contributed to research creating new varieties and hybrids of sugarcane. Amal created several sugarcane hybrids, including Sakaram cross with Zia and Sakaram cross with Arianthu. Unfortunately, correspondence of hers from the time tells us that she faced extensive discrimination and jealousy from her male superiors. Amal then moved to the UK, though perhaps not intentionally. She traveled there in 1939 for the 7th International Genetical Congress, but the start of World War II made her unable to return to India. So instead, she remained in the UK and worked. She co-wrote The Chromosome Atlas of Cultivated Plants, which was published in 1945. She also had an interest in ethnobotany and medicinal plants and studied plants in those areas. Her work during this time reflected her wide interests across the plant kingdom. She returned to India in 1948 and became very involved in the evolving scientific establishment there. She led the reorganization of the Botanical Survey of India, though that was not without its challenges. She retired in 1959 but went on to lead the botany wing at a laboratory in Jammu, Kashmir. There is a herbarium in Jammu that bears her name and holds 25,000 species of Indian plants. Amal had so many accomplishments during her life that I cannot list them all. If you'd like to hear more detail about her life, please check out some of the sources in the description which can provide more detail. She performed important botanical scientific research during a time when single women were not often encouraged to do so, though she was fortunate to come from an enlightened and supportive family. But as with most people, Amal's success came with a dark side. She became a eugenicist. She lived during a time in which genetics was becoming more and more prominent, and this had the unfortunate side effect of also feeding the eugenics movement. For those unfamiliar eugenics is a belief that humanity can be improved via selective breeding, sterilization, and abortion. It is an abhorrent movement because it is premised on dehumanizing members of marginalized groups, including people of color, the poor, and the disabled. Eugenics is what led to Nazi sterilization and murder programs during the 1930s. So in case it isn't clear, this is not a good movement to be involved with. Amal's co-author on the Chromosome Atlas of Cultivated Plants was C.D. Darlington, a prominent eugenicist. They were lifelong friends despite Darlington's ongoing racism and criticism of Amal's work, and Amal regularly gave Darlington information about India and its caste system for his research. Amal also joined the Eugenics Society in 1931 and appeared to maintain a lifelong interest in eugenics. So while we can admire the important botanical work she did during her life, we should also acknowledge that she contributed to a community that promoted racism and genocide. Later in life, Amal devoted much of her time to environmental activism in order to preserve the flora and fauna of India. She contributed to the fight against the construction of a dam in the Silent Valley, which would have flooded a diverse natural area there. The project was canceled in response to the public outcry, and that area was declared a national park in 1985. Amal passed away in February of 1984, and she was working in her lab until she died. I quite like a quote from a biography of her life by C.B. Subramanian, which I've linked in the description. She lived up to her own definition of greatness with combined virtue in life and passion in the pursuit of her science. There is thus much for us to emulate in her life and work. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the life of this botanist. If there's a botanist you'd like to see me feature in a future video, please let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to support Brilliant Botany, you can do so by checking out the awesome merch at brilliantbotany.com shop or become a patron over on Patreon. Even $1 a month makes a huge difference. And a huge thank you to my existing Patreon supporters who are helping Brilliant Botany grow. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week.